cool. Hey YouTube, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and today I decided to give myself a haircut. So, in order to cut my hair, I use a clipper with these different size attachments and just buzz off my hair. The problem I had today is that my longest attachment is three quarters of an inch. And I was thinking like two and a half inches. I don't think they sell that size except maybe for grooming dogs. But luckily I have a 3D printer. So I decided to make my own mega clippers. Now I know hair clippers aren't the most exciting thing in the world. Although this one is pretty ridiculous so I, I kinda love it. But uh, the point of this video is to show you that 3D printing can be used to make useful, functional things, not just a bunch of plastic junk lying around your house. So this is something I actually was going to use, and I did use it. You might notice my hair is shorter than two and a half inches, and that's because I kind of made a design mistake here. I based these clippers off of the existing attachment, um, so they look pretty similar, but I didn't think through the function of it quite enough. So these work fine if you're shaving at the right angle, but if you tilt back a little bit, like I did, it'll end up cutting a lot shorter. Unfortunately, unlike 3D printing, you can't just try over and over again. My hair got shorter, so I made another attachment a slightly more modest 1.5 inch clipper. And although I made a mistake, this is actually a great opportunity to show you the benefits of parametric modeling. So parametric modeling software like SolidWorks, which I use, is a way of designing 3D parts where you basically put in values for everything. So rather than just drawing something that you think looks cool, with parametric modeling, you actually say, okay, this blade is going to be 100 millimeters. This radius right here is going to be a 60 millimeter radius and so on. You're basically defining every little thing. And while that might sound like a hassle, it's really great when, for example, I want to change a two and a half inch clipper to a one and a half inch clipper. So yeah, I was able to make a completely different version of the clippers um, by just changing the value of this distance from the clipper itself, which is pretty cool. So I'm not going to go through the entire process of making these because that would go into an hour long tutorial video and that's not exactly what I'm trying to do. I just want to show you that anyone can make simple parts. You don't have to have a master's in engineering. You don't need to own $50,000 3D printers and software. Um, you know, I did it. And look at me. Burpy derpy. So when it comes to designing the parts, the only tool I really use all the time is a pair of calipers. And these just let you measure exact dimensions of parts. So it's especially useful when I'm building based on an existing thing. So I can look at these clippers and I can turn on my calipers and... Oh! That's exactly 47.1 millimeters. So I go in the computer and put in those same values so everything clicks in like it's supposed to. Even when you're not basing your model off of something existing, um, I always use the calipers just to visualize like, okay, that's 15 millimeters. Anyways, like I said, I don't want to get too buried in the details right now. I'm making these videos for you guys, so I'm interested in hearing what exactly you want to see. Should I go more in depth as to how I actually make this whole part? Or do you just want to see different kinds of cool things that I can make? I mean, this is YouTube. I guess you probably just want to see me blow these things up, right? Should I just blow them up? Anyways, you guys let me know what you want to see. Leave a comment, make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with my future videos. Until next time, YouTube.